This is Deads on the Podcast presents Warzone Eternal. Welcome to Warzone Eternal. I am your host, Rick, and co-host Alex from Resident Evil Games. And the other one. I'm just a, uh, you know. What are you? I'm, I'm you know, background noise. <laughs> is that what you uh, are? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, but it's Rick, it's Rick Talk, as they like to call me here on the podcast. And of course, yeah. here at Thunder Ford Studios, which is, which is Rick my Talk. Space. Yeah, my space, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi table top. So, what are we talking about today? Um, well, I mean, I guess uh, in the last week something's been going on that's been... Really? Yeah, no, right. It's been what? <laughs> keeping a couple of us a little bit busy. Uh, yeah. Not me. Um, <laughs> you be, like, I can't imagine what the behind the back, behind the scenes for you, because you're at, at the time of this recording, it's at 126,000. Correct. Yep. Um, that's huge. That's a great success. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're we're thrilled. I mean, compared to where we were last year, I yeah, mean, this is uh, yeah, magnitude's better, um, and the the reception has has suggested that we should be doing magnitudes better. Yes, yeah. people are people are pleased, and yeah, the number of comments of like, yeah, this is great that you went back to uh, mm-hmm. back to the drawing board. You Redoing canceled the models, and yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, no. So people are people are are genuinely enthused and. Yeah, so the um, number of backers is, I I think, about the same as where we were last year. Okay. Just shows the number of additional. Yeah. uh, The the amount more that people are enthused about this, right? So you've been getting, what, an hour of sleep every night? Yeah. Well, (laughs) it depends, right? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, we've got a, Warzone's got an international (laughs) fan base. Yep. So we've got people, you Mm -hmm. know, sending messages or posting comments. Almost twenty four hours a day. Wow. I will. I will say this though that that group down in Antarctica are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean they keep pinging me about what the shipping cost is going to be. <laughs> right, I and mean, I just cannot calculate it for you. Right, um, it's on the boat. <laughs> FBOAP. Let's just hope that, that that's what we can set it to. <clears throat> yeah. So no, it's been uh, it's it's been good. But yeah, Brian, Brian, and I have been trying to be as responsive as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, recognizing the fact that, yeah, I mean, we're U.S. based, right? So there's going to be times when we're sleeping. Where you're sleeping. Um, uh, I, I think it's funny in the in the chats and in the comments on the Kickstarter, <laughs> you guys literally have to let everybody know. It's like, uh, okay, uh, it is X bedtime. amount of time. <laughs> it is bedtime here in the States. We will reconvene in the morning. Yep. Please, yep. please stand by. Yep, <laughs> you know? exactly. And then you get the, you know. The Pledge of Allegiance, and, or whatever, you know, uh, and, and then the static. Yeah, so the screen goes yeah. black. Yeah, exactly. But you no, just dated it, yourself. It, it's been it's been uh, much more manageable the last couple of days. Because yes. I mean, like with any Kickstarter, um, you know, we've uh, the initial multi day hype is yeah. has kind of petered out, and so now we're at the you know sustain and you know, continue uh, marketing, continue advertising, try to grab some more eyes on the project. And we're seeing that. I mean, they're they're not massive numbers every day like they were in the first two days, but sure. we're getting new backers every day. Yeah, and yeah. So that's great. It's been fun to watch the social media pages and the comments and the people going, "Oh yeah, I saw this at Adepticon. I had to get in." Yeah. Uh, and then of course, like I've got a group out in New York that's like they're chomping at the bit for more information. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I mean, we're, we're we're working on that, right? I mean. I sent an update out today, you know, specifically noting like, hey, there's there's questions. We've seen these questions. We do want to answer these questions. Um, you know, things like, well, how can we manage our pledge in the in the pledge manager? Right? I want to be able to <laughs> be able to swap things around. How can I use my the, the money that I've put into it as a, as a credit to be able to pick things a la carte? Or yeah, trying to figure that out. And you know, the, the thing is, right with 
I'm going to go down a um, small, you know, a small rabbit here. hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so pledge managers, right? Whoever you're using, whether it's backer kit or game found or whatever, they're, they're great because they, they really help um, offload a lot of the burden of trying to figure out you know, who gets what and how, how do you pull, uh, you know, pull your fulfillment order list. All right. Um, but those are all, you know, constructed applications, right? They have, they have <laughs> boundaries, right? This yeah. is the way it's built to work. <clears throat> right. And so anything that you want to do, you have to try to figure out, is that something that can be achieved within the context of that, that pledge manager? Uh, and so I, I'm sort of speaking as we're talking about this to a couple comments that we got on the Kickstarter page about like, well, hey, this, this is a pretty simple programming fix. Well, the, the difference is it's not just like a programming fix that we're putting in um, in regards to whatever our pledge manager is. This is a proprietary third-party pledge manager, right? right. A, a okay. vendor that we're making use of. And so we, we can't just pop in there and say, you know, here's here's what you need to do with your code. You just need to recode your, your <laughs> application. <laughs> just recode everything. Well, or, I mean, so I can understand, yeah. like, somebody who is who is a coder, they can look at this and say, well, this this would actually be a fairly simple thing to address. Sure. But a company like sure. Backerkit, for instance, supports hundreds uh, yeah. of, of um, Kickstarters a year. A day. Yeah, right, exactly. Jeez. Yeah, you're right, you're right, my... Numbers are off by magnitudes. <laughs> um, and so in that sense, you know, the fact that they're really good at customer service, really yeah. responsive, you know, th that that's an awesome thing. Right. But to also expect them to be able to go and, and change the, the underlying code to an, allow functionality that they had not originally built in, you know, it's just not something you can ask. Right. Or it's not yeah. something you can ask unless it's got a... It's got a, a, a number of zeros behind it. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. So. <clears throat> so I have a question for for Alex in regards to the Kickstarter. It has been a week. One week. Yep. One week as of today that it's been up. Yep. Well, I guess actually this is the eighth day. So Sure. I, all right. <laughs> sure. Started on a Tuesday, and it is a Tuesday. It is a week. It's a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, in that week, what has been one of the biggest challenges for you and the team in regards to uh, <clears throat> to the Kickstarter in general, what is a what's been like a hurdle that you guys have been having to jump over, maybe repeatedly? It's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of it is is trying to make sure that we are you know, responsive to the, the questions as they come in, R recognizing that you know sometimes mm. they're going to be you know one off or outlier questions that right. that that maybe. You know, maybe don't need to be addressed as quickly, but trying to identify in there, okay, these are the things that the people are an asking repeatedly. And so... Um, like coming up with an FAQ, potentially? Well, right, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the funny thing about yeah. FAQs, right, and I guess I'm guilty of it myself as a, as a chronic Kickstarter backer. Yeah, 130 <laughs> some odd. Yeah, I know, I know. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Wait, what? <laughs> Kickstarter's been around for a while, all right? No, so th this is what I, again, I, 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 I apologize <laughs> that I'm going to take it off, off rails we go. a little bit. When it launched, I went in there, you know, to look at it and everything, yeah. and I backed it. Yeah. Right. And I so just so I could read the comments. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but when I looked at it, when it says Resnova Games, and it says two Kickstarters that they've launched or yeah. done, yeah. and it's a hundred and thirty. I think it's like one thirty nine or one thirty eight or something like that. Backed. I was like, Good God, <laughs> what does this guy do? Wow. Right? Backs Kickstarter. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I could actually. I, I didn't. I didn't look to see what what he backed. Yeah, because you could learn a lot about a person. I think based on Just what kind what of they kickstarters back. they back. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, they're they're pretty much all games. Nerd. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, and actually, a, a lot of a lot of RPG stuff. So, I, better nerd. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's a rabbit hole. But do you think that has helped you as far as doing your own kickstarters? The amount of kickstarters you've Backed. Yeah, no, I know. I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, it, so it gave me some sense of what other Kickstarters have done, how they structured themselves, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and it also gave me, I think, I think it gave me some clarity on the idea of whether or not um, you know a Kickstarter has to have certain things. Yeah. So I mean, right. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to fight this fight again. But you know, last year's attempt, right, was premised on the idea of no stretch goals, no add-ons, mm -hmm. because we yeah. wanted to keep it tight and quick. Mm -hmm. And and people people did not enjoy that. Sure, I still think that's an appropriate way to do a lot of kickstarters. I think it's an appropriate. It could have been an appropriate way to do this kickstarter again. 
yeah. a brand new company. We are using Kickstarter in the way that it's intended, which is help us raise capital so we can produce a new product, a new thing. Promising a bunch of stuff, adding more add-ons, more unlocks. I understand it creates a level of excitement. It sure. gets people um, yeah, you know, it's engaged. A, it's a spectacle. It is, yeah. But it also really, really easily derails a company's focus to a point where you got too much on your plate. Well, you just can't fulfill yeah. in, a, in a meaningful time frame. So then as a brand new company, you're looking at you know two, two different paths. We don't do stretch goals. We don't do unlocks. We don't give away a, a ton of free stuff. Um, and, and people think that we're taking advantage of backers or we're like, this is just not a value add. So you, yeah. you risk that characterization. You go the other way and now you've added a whole bunch of stuff your fulfillment has now um, bumped up by an entire year. And so mm -hmm. now as a brand new company, mm -hmm. people look at you and say, well, this is an unreliable company. Why would I ever give you money again? Because you guys cannot fulfill in a time frame that, that is meaningful to me. Yeah. And for me, that second one is is the far more pressing one, right? The right. desire sure. to, to gain reputation, to um, have people understand that we are a reliable company, that there's integrity behind the leadership of the company. Mm -hmm. And that we want to get this product to you as quickly as possible. Partially, I mean, so forget all of that. <laughs> Just because it would be great to have people beginning to play, play with their yes. toys. Play the game, play with the toys. Yeah, yeah definitely. So yeah. so I, I still feel strongly that, that that negative characterization is the more concerning one, right? The yeah. one of mm -hmm. you don't deliver on time. Yeah. Um, so this time we're trying to strike a balance. So we're, we're still similar to where we were last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did. All, every model that people have seen so far, they're seeing those renders because we have sculpted them. Yeah, we've done the work beforehand. There is no here's a concept drawing. Nope. Sure, here's a an excerpt from an here's old what you mutant, could get right an excerpt from an old Mutant Chronicles role playing game book of a unit type, and we say, well, this is what we're going to make next, right? Yeah, there, there's none of that. Right. And we're not going to do that right. at, at any point here because, sure. because again, if we don't have it at least being sculpted right now, mm -hmm. then you know, that, that means that the summer's done before we even have our sc initial sculpts in hand. Right. Oh, yeah. And then you're from that point, you're like, now it's all the pre-production considerations, mm -hmm. right? Where do we where do we need to resize things? Where do we need to put cut lines? Where are we going to have... Um, detail areas are going to be problems when making the molds that so we're going to have to address. Oh, sure. We have to do that across the entire range of models. Yep. Right? I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about 104 models, I think, in this range. Ooh, so cool. all of those... All right. <laughs> all of those figures have got to be um, prepped for pre-production, yep. and then we go into production. Yeah. Right? right. And so, so every time we add something else, we add another, another model um, or... Think about it, like you add something that's brand new. You add swag, yeah, you add yeah. swag to the uh, to sure. the Kickstarter, right? Yeah. T-shirts or stickers or something else. Those all now become an additional um, production channel, right? Now yeah. you've got to have somebody mm -hmm. else that you're working with to produce those things because the, the people that are going to print the Wars on Eternal rulebook, they're not also going to make dice for us. Right. So, yep. right. So, or stickers, or stickers, or any, or any of that other swag. Right. Yeah. So, it's so, all different entities. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, every time you add something else to it, you've introduced a new relationship where there could be a hiccup. So, like for instance, let, let's say we a time sink. Yeah, we, we decide to add yeah. shirts. Right. Right. Sure. And so now we've got a brand new manufacturer of shirts, and fifty percent of our backers say, "I want a shirt," so they add those. And right now, that'd be over three hundred shirts. Right. Over three hundred shirts. Woo! Yep. But also. Let's say then the shirt manufacturer has a hiccup and delays. Now those 300 people, their entire order is being delayed because we introduced another supply yeah. channel. Mm -hmm. And so minimizing the number of places we're getting stuff from, yep. minimizing the number of things that we're trying to create, those were the goals of last year's Kickstarter. And while it doesn't fully feel like at this time, it's pretty close to it's where still it is. still that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because, you know, the starter sets are made up of figures that you can also get in the unit box or yep. the expansion boxes, yeah. right? So the, you pick which one you want to go down. Um, so there's 104 miniatures, but those 104 miniatures kind of represent the totality of all of the various options you could get out of this Kickstarter. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, now that was a very long answer to your question <laughs> of does backing 130 plus Kickstarters over the last 10 years, does that give me some insight into things? And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it does because yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've backed both kinds. 
backed very mm-hmm. sparse Kickstarters because I wanted the product. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I've also backed enough uh, Cool Mini or Not 131. ones. 131. 131. There we go. Yeah. I've also backed enough Cool Mini or Not ones where it was, you know, they, they've been able to bake into their production cost having 30 stretch goals worth of stuff. Yeah. Mm. And it's just like, okay, hit the pinata and what do we get today? So I've been I've seen both, and I think both yeah. are both have their roles. <clears throat> sure. All right. So my next follow up question to that <laughs> is, um, you with there being added in stretch goals, right? Uh, and I know that the new stretch goals have been dropped today. Correct. With the uh, expansion boxes, uh, and then the free PDF campaign pack for Graviton Protocol. Yep. And the more full color rule book art, which is always nice. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right? <clears throat> How many more can we say are potentially out there? Because I, are, were you expecting <laughs> to, get, to get there, <laughs> to get here, right? Were we, were, was, that, was this a, the number we're currently at, was that a number you're like, yeah, we're absolutely going to make it to this number. And, but now I, I kind of, I'm, I'm wondering is, so you know, every time you drop a miniature set, that's when the people are going to go like, that's ooh. when they, that's when they come at it. Yeah, right. And then we're not too far from the next one unlocking. Yeah. So, so obviously, everything you do in a Kickstarter is aspirational, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we, we had hoped that we were going to get to a point where we had unlocked the expansion boxes mm-hmm. for all of the units that were in the starter boxes. Right. And with this this last batch that came out mm-hmm. um, as announced today. Every unit in all of the starter boxes has a representation in an expansion box. Okay. So, yes, we hoped to get here, but we really had no way of knowing. Correct. If we were yeah, get sure. Um, I mean, I, I know I have insider knowledge, <laughs> right? So, I do know some stuff. A little bit. But as far as like the audience is like seeing these new miniatures come out, and I know that there's been other weird requests, there have been some really weird requests. <laughs> and I'm curious is. Is there a Hail Mary type of um, thing that we're looking at putting out there? If we get to X, this is a Hail Mary drop. We are actually going to be able to do do a X. like this weird ass thing. Yeah, right. And when I say weird ass thing, that could be a bust of uh, Thomas Jane. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, a, a one as bitch hunter. As Mitch Hunter. Or, or just Thomas Jane. I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> right? Um, something, you know, yeah. as a Hail Mary piece. Because I know a lot of people are wondering about vehicles. Oh. Yeah. So, no. Okay. That's, okay. Yep. yep. Good answer. And so, I, I guess, to the to listeners, just, just, to be, just to be clear, Rick was not setting, Rick Doc was not setting me up for a uh, answer there. <laughs> this, is a, this is a truly um, organic dialogue. Yeah. Um, no, no. So, uh, and, and one of the things that, you know, Brian and I've talked about is, um, you know, so small vehicles. So when we talk about vehicles at all, mm-hmm. we're talking about small vehicles or the equivalent for Elgroth, which would be some of their larger, like, mm-hmm. beasties, right? Right. Um, so Hurricane Walker, Eradicator, Death Droid, um, Biogiant. Oh, they're awesome names, yeah. Straight. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> straight, straight out of that. I have the urge to go pick an 80s movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. An 80s movie or the... Uh, uh, the back of uh, a trapper keeper of a oh, yeah. um, high school student. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so so when we get to that point, and clear, like when we get to that point, right. it's going to have to be after each of the factions are a bit more established, right? Right, sure. So an established means probably at least another unit or two of some sort mm-hmm. and a little bit more variety in some of the um, support options right. for the current units. Right. Because um, we don't want to introduce the Eradicator Death Droid for Cybertronic, and <laughs> and yeah, everyone do. just looks at it and says, okay, great. So I have no way of killing it. I'm thing. dead. Right. That was a fun game. Right. Exactly. So, so that might be something in a, in a later wave. Yeah, no. Beyond the Kickstarter. 100%. Yeah. And okay. um, we've hinted at this, but um, we will absolutely, during the course of the Kickstarter, um, be, you know, be showing off or hinting at some of the things that, that we have mm-hmm. planned already. Okay. Um, that's planned down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. Brian has mentioned numerous times, right, that mm-hmm. he's got like seven waves worth of uh, yeah. unit types Ooh. standing yeah. out yeah, and yeah, ready ridiculous. to go. And he, ready he to go. sends them over to me, you know, eagerly, and I look at them and say, well, <laughs> let's let's slow down here a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so 
we want to get to those things right. and we're hoping that we get to them you know, sooner than later, but it's hard to say what that time right. frame looks like. So if I were to make a suggestion or a request, again, this is just me being this silly. This is you being Rick. Being Rick and being a little <laughs> silly, is the faction, um, the Brotherhood. Yep. Yes. Right? The leader of the Brotherhood is the Cardinal, the right? The Card, yep. Right? Could we get you to cosplay <laughs> as the Cardinal and then do a 3D scan of you, of you, and then have uh, that turned into a three quarter bus <laughs> and then print I'd it out? I would pay for that. I would pay for that. <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, I don't think that's in the So let, let's just put it this way. All right. Because, you know, the boys got me, right? That's that's a TikTok phrase, right? Yeah. The boys got me. All right. <laughs> if this were for some weird reason to get a super surge, and we got a and we hit a million dollars, <laughs> right? A million dollars. That would be a surge. That would be a super surge. That would, yes. would definitely be a surge. <laughs> so if it, let's say by end of the closing of this Kickstarter, if we got to a million dollars, would you cosplay as the Cardinal and let us do a three D scan and print you out as a as like the great. Stretch goal. Yeah, I, if we get to a million dollars, not two million, one million. Yeah, it's if we get to a million, two, not two, two, <laughs> two a. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well make it three. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes, if we get two, a million. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Yeah, but it is. Yes, I, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. I would do something. Like <laughs> All right, boys, you got me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you heard it right here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, like, is this for Adepticon or Gen Con? Uh, well, whenever it would be released, it would be available in this Kickstarter. So, no, I'm talking about when does the cosplay occur? Oh, you don't have to wear it to a show. Oh, okay. You well, just got to dress up so we can scan you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, and okay, then sure. and then you know and take pictures and then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of pictures. Right. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. Fair enough. I, I can I can make that promise. All right. All right, boys. <laughs> well, you heard it here go. first. <laughs> all right. Get it to, you know, get your folks out there. Get everybody on board. Every retailer in the nation. And if you hear this, you know, back that <laughs> Kickstarter. Oh, so actually that brought up something. Um, so we had some comments on one of the Facebook groups about retail pledges. Mm-hmm. Um that's a great way for the people that, like, they don't have the money right now, but they really want to get into it. They can go down and talk to their local yep. game stores to jump on there as mm-hmm. a store retail pledge. Um, have you had any of those yeah. jump in already? Yeah. Um, I can't remember the last number. The last time I I'll checked, we had, I, <laughs> last time I checked, we had, I think, six or seven retail, retail backers. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was the cartel. Cartel. Uh, uh, 16. Oh, nice. Okay, 16. All right. That's so pretty good. That number's jumped up a bunch. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> I mean, I would agree that uh, it's not only a good not only a good way to, um, you know, for people who look at the Kickstarter and say, you know, the, the timing's not going to work out for my yep. budget. It's also another great way for people who find themselves, you know, where shipping is going to be expensive. Yep. Um, to pretty much, like, work with their retailer to, to make it almost like a hub for right. them. Right. So, right on. Yeah. I, I, uh, and for the retailers out there that might be listening to this, uh, one of the things you can always do too is get your consumers that are wanting it, or reach out to your consumer, your player base, and be like, "Hey, we're considering backing this Kickstarter. Show it to your to everybody there, and be like, if you want to get in on it with the store, they can come give you a deposit. Yeah. Towards the pledge, the retailer pledge, to guarantee their spot and their their product." And it doesn't have to be, you know, what an end, you know, if you went all in or right. yeah. a Christmas Day package or yep, whatever. Sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the retailer package is missing some of the bells and whistles of right. like a Christmas morning one. Sure. Because there's no, you know, the acrylic and everything would all be, would be chosen separately. Yeah. But yeah, no, the uh, um, 100%. The, we talked to enough retailers that we feel we've got a, an approach that, that should work for most of them. So yeah, it's a, it's a straightforward, it's a simple deposit, right. it's a small right. deposit for a retailer. And then what that does is that opens up the um, the backer kit for them and then they can choose basically a la carte what they want. We're, we're gonna put together a couple uh, bundles of product that we mm-hmm. think are good 
retailer kind of introductions, right? Like yeah. One of each of the starter sets or, um, you know, the, the faction bundles yep. yeah, created together. Nice. Um, so, so basically if you're a retailer and you're like, I don't know what Warzone really is. I don't know where to get in here. I can click on this and this is, this is what Resonova says. This is the bundle. Says. This is what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or they're, they're someone who's super savvy and they're like, I know what my players want or I know what I want as a retailer. Cause I yeah. loved this game, you know, 25 years ago. And so they can pick and choose what they want yeah. out of there as well. So yeah. Nice. So, so for retailers, we hope it's a, it's a good setup. It's a good approach. Yeah. Right on. And that's what I think that's one of the things that will make the, uh, the longevity of the game uh, viable is the retail support. Yeah. No, 100%. I mean, yeah. we, and the million dollars. And the million dollars. <laughs> that's right. One yeah. No, we, 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 we played the heck out of this game um, in our, you know, friendly local gaming store yeah. back in the, the late nineties. And so 100%, I, I fully believe that, that retail presence is important. It's it's the place where gamers meet other gamers, make yep. friends, and get to play games. So, um, I, basement tables are awesome, but I it's better in a game store. Better in a game store. It's that whole environment. Yep. Mm-hmm. One, yep. It's the same reason why I think you know games are games are better at a convention. You play a game for the first time at a convention, you're like, whoa, this is yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, and it's just because of the environment. Yep. Yeah. Yep. A lot of positive energy. Hundred exactly. percent. Yeah. I can dig it. Well, I think with that, that's a little bit of a talk for the Kickstarter. How about we jump into some mechanics? Sweet. Cool. We'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk about some mechanics. Nice. There's your pause, Brian. Because <laughs> <laughs> Brian will go in and he'll yep. listen to it. Yep. And it's so funny because the last episode, he was listening and he was like, where am I supposed to put the commercial? You guys just kind of kept going. <laughs> like, like now? Like, like we're still talking? Yeah, okay. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but we do need to pause it. Because yeah. I do need to go to the restroom. <gasps> no! Yeah. Hey, if you're looking for Dead Zone the Podcast, check out every social media platform because you're probably going to find us. Just look us up, Dead Zone the Podcast. All right, welcome back. So let's jump into some mechanics Uh, because one of the things for the Kickstarter is we had a whole bunch of live events, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You did a couple of them. What did you do exactly? So I basically hung out as, uh, (laughs) (laughs) as, as Brian did a live stream for the first four hours of the Kickstarter. Yeah. Answering questions in this chat, and then Brian and I joined the uh, the Build Paint Play uh, stream or channel. Uh, Dave Taylor, uh, Jake Jeski to you know talk about talk about what the Kickstarter was, what the miniatures were. That's a cool little um, you know show where they, they look at well, number one they kind of talk about some particular subject, right? Yeah, they just got back from Adepticon, just got back from LVO, whatever it might be. Sure, and then they go through. Um, a bunch of painted submissions for um, you know people that are part of their Facebook group. Oh, okay. um, and just kind of you know sharing the love of the hobby, the yep. love of the, you know the, the community um, involvement that that miniatures painting really fosters. Um, so we, we wound out the night there, and it was cool. We were live on that when we hit our funding goal. So, yeah, yep. um, it was pretty cool. So and then of course we we did a live play of the game yes, uh, at a local mm-hmm. store in like about twenty minutes, not even twenty minutes, like. 10, 15 minutes after we hit stop on the record is when you hit it. Yep. And I was like, oh, sweet. Because yeah. <laughs> we were outside picking everything away. And I'm like, wait, they just hit it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. The The first day's events, those were a blast. And yes, we very much appreciate uh, you you organizing that event. I, we had a blast doing it. Uh, but it brought up a question. So with mechanics, of course, we're play testing, And so we're still trying to learn everything. Sure. Um, and it, and it's fun because we're, we're going from different game systems to jumping in and learning this. And we missed a few things. Uh, one of the things that we missed was how wounds work. Sure. Yep. Um, let's jump in that and give our listeners the idea of what the wounds do correctly. <laughs> sure. So uh, on average, just like, you know, Warzone back in the day. So, you know, the, the veteran players would be familiar with this. Most models have a single wound. Okay. Right? And now in previous iterations or in a lot of other skirmish-type games out there, you suffer that wound, you're removed from the table, right? Yeah. You're just, you're dead. 
um, since we're playing with a small model count, yep. we wanted to you know, preserve the opportunity for models to come under fire, right? Mm -hmm. To take kind of um, uh, superficial wounds, right? Things that aren't just going to immediately remove them from the battlefield. Sure. And and also give an opportunity for things like medics to um, you know have a role in the game. Nice. So yeah, exactly, I like medics. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. So one of the things that we decided to do was was make it so that um, a model did not get removed from the the battlefield unless they failed their armor save by a sufficient amount. So in general, if you fail an armor save by six or more, yep, you're you're dead. You're dead. Now, if you are a multi-wound model, that slightly changes. So those those additional wounds become almost like you know a blade of armor, right? You, yeah. you take those things off. So Razid, which has multiple wounds, does not worry about the degree of their failure mm -hmm. until they have a number of wound counters on them equal to their wound stat. So, okay. so you think about it, one wound model, they they fail their armor save, they take a wound counter. Yep. If that failure, so they now have a number of wound counters equal to their wound stat. Yep. If they failed that wound by six or more, that roll, they're just immediately removed. Mm -hmm. If they failed by less, then they just take that wound counter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Razid, he takes, he fails his armor save. Doesn't matter what he fails it by, he just takes a wound counter. Takes a wound counter. Because he's got multiple wounds. Yes. Yeah. Now, once you have a number of wound counters that are um, equal to your wound stat. Yep. You also double the failure of any future wound uh, failures. <laughs> Ow! So, so the, the idea being, um, so you're a one wound model. Yep. If you 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 fail your first wound, uh, your armor roll, but you only fail by um, one to five, right? Yeah. You just take a wound counter on you. Yep. Again, you don't get killed immediately unless you fail by six or more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you have a wound counter on you equal to the number of wounds on your wound stat. Any future mm -hmm. failures you double the magnitude of that failure. So the idea being, you can take a wound, but you're not going to take a second wound. Right? <laughs> you're almost guaranteed to die. And if you do, you're definitely Sylvester Stallone. Right, right. Because <laughs> you think about it, you know, if you fail by six or more, yeah. which means that in any future cases, it's you 12. could only fail by one or two. Yeah. Because those double to two or four. Once you, If you fail by three, that doubles to six, and you're dead. Yep. So your margin for error becomes really, really, really tight. If you have a number of wound counters on you equal to your wound stat, so um, so again, a model like a Razid, a big model, does not worry about those things sure. until they have a number of wound counters equal to their wound stat. Nice. Now that that's a, that's also shows some realism, right? In, in the yeah. in that combat scenario, because you can get shot. Anybody can get shot, and, we, and it isn't necessarily going to kill you. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, yep. But you, you're not going to move as well. You're not going to shoot as well. You're going to have your you know restrictions. Yep. And when you get shot again, yeah, you're done. Yeah, you're probably, you're probably <laughs> going to die. I'm yeah. the one wound counter character. Yeah, but I, uh, but like you said, that also gives the opportunity for a medic to come in. Yep, 100%. do a medic thing, which, yep. yeah, which it which I like might medics. be might be a thing for Rick. <laughs> yeah, I, love it. I like medics, not just in game, but in life. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and also and Namor, yeah. just in case anybody wanted to know. <laughs> and Namor. Uh, it also gives for some uh, serious thematic gameplay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, like. That oh my god I made that roll, this guy survived. Now I need the medic. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag Trencher Dave. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the whole, <laughs> yeah, the, the yep. whole joke about Trencher J Dave came along because we had a trencher who just would not die. Yeah, right? So yeah, he had his wound counters on him. Chesty puller over here, <laughs> sixteen <laughs> times. <laughs> Still was able to storm the storm the the ridge and take over the exactly the the the, the, the battle station area or whatever. <laughs> nice. yep. Trencher Dave. Yep, one hundred percent. So yeah, so the, yeah. the idea being again, um, you know, we want the game to play quick, uh, so we want models to be able to be removed. Oh yeah. Um, but it's so it's not just a matter of, hey, everybody gets two to three wounds, so you have to go through yeah. those. You have the to idea is like, you could potentially fail and die right away, and obviously, uh, more damaging, uh, higher power weapons mm -hmm. are more likely to kill you just yeah. right away because the strength yeah. is going to be that much higher. Which means that the or the damage is going to be that much higher, which means that the likelihood of you failing by a greater margin increases. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was the. I think for the most part in your battle report, you guys got it right. <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think somebody yeah. somebody called out one spot where somebody got shot, failed their armor save, and the model was immediately I, yeah. removed. 
And yeah. I think that, yep, that was, so in that situation, should have gotten a wound counter unless they failed to buy six or more, yeah. in which case they still would have been removed immediately. Yep. Which, mm-hmm. hopefully that helps uh, some of the listeners as far as clearing that up. Absolutely. Because uh, there has been some healthy co- conversations about it. Yep. Um, but I figured why not get that yeah. out here too. Yeah. To, yeah. you know, talk to the man when it comes to the wounds. <laughs> That's right. The man over here. With Alex. the medic next to him. Well, I mean, I'm a real life medic. Was. Was. <laughs> But once you were, you never forget. I mean, right? I mean, I forget stuff all the time. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> direct pressure, elevation. I don't. What is that for? <laughs> Who cares? Nice. But so in the rule book, one of the things that we'll do as well is we will probably put um, almost like a flow chart. Yeah, oh, ju- nice. just so it, while that degree of explanation might not really be necessary. We know that some people are visual learners, so that yep. they can see. Okay, step Definitely. by step by step by step. Okay. Failed wound counter. Do my wound counters equal my wound stat? Yes. Did I fail by six or more? Yes. Remove model. Right? And just go. We can lay yeah. it out in that <laughs> way. A flow chart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like yeah. a flow chart. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. So at, well, probably, because I, I think you're right. I think that's probably the one place in the, the game yeah. where there is a level of complexity that people are like, okay, I'm not grabbing this immediately. Yep. Well, I also think that like in that example of, of what you guys are doing, yep. uh, you were in, at a store for the first time. Yep. You were live streaming <laughs> your, for the first time in that capacity. Yeah. There's going to be some misses. Oh, yeah. Right? And when you're playing at a, a, at a pace. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's trying to not. Right. When you play at home, it's and you're trying this for the first time. You're taking your time. Were you going to say you're... in your basement why mom's up making spaghetti or meatloaf? No, she was baking cookies, but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and, and now, and also, you know, say something that I'm sure like competitive players will gasp at, but mm-hmm. it also doesn't matter. Yep. Right. Like, okay, it, so so you missed, and you you, you should have left the guy on there with a wound counter, but you took him away right away, handicapped you, but you know what? The game keeps playing. Game and keeps going. Yeah, it's, it's okay. And did you have a good time? Yes. yes exactly. <laughs> no, one hundred percent. It's a. I mean, it's right up there with. A, I'm sure I can. I can't count on my hands how many times that I've been playing one of these miniatures games, and I totally forgot about that guy I left in that building. Right. <laughs> that might have actually been able to score the points I needed. Right. Totally forgot about him, yep. and then we're cleaning the table because I lost, and I moved the building, and there's my dude yep. sitting right there. <laughs> He's the guy that's. I've been on the radio this whole time. I don't know why they're not responding. <laughs> Nobody's listening to me. It's Treasure Dave. <laughs> All of my allies have left. The enemies have abandoned the battlefield. <laughs> I'm just standing here. I'm calling in my nine line to get a halo, a halo lift out of here, but nobody's responding. Yeah, because that's never happened. Well, well, that's kind of funny. Is like that could have that would be a trencher Dave thing. I think. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the next episode of the further adventures of Trencher yeah. Dave. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm fairly certain that he has walked literally across the entire Martian desert by himself at some point. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> he he's gonna be, have his own mythos. This guy, right? Yeah, I, I think this is a, a perfect opportunity for a small like indie press comic. I ah. mean, like Source Point Press right here in Michigan. That's right. Or Caliber Comics. That's yeah. right. Caliber needs some new 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 uh, breath breathed into them. There we go. Because they are their life is like they're on the fire. They're they're on the table where it's like beep. Caliber Comics. Well, I'm just saying. Then and if, you're, and if anybody from Caliber is hearing <laughs> hearing that. You know it's true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, with that, just say it's which gears. All right, cool. So, Rick <laughs> put a challenge out for Alex on hitting a million dollars. Yes, I which did. Is, which is kind of crazy. I mean, it's not. I mean, we're it's one kind of crazy. way there. But what? <laughs> <laughs> if you look at it in those kind of numbers, we're only we're a tenth of the way. A tenth of the way. Yeah. But you more brought up. I mean, yes, we are actually more than a tenth, and that's pretty yes. awesome. Uh, you brought up the Brotherhood. I did. So one of the things we've been doing is some lore. Mm-hmm. So what is this cardinal thing in the Brotherhood? What is that? So the card. And here's another wonderful bit of you know, Mutant Chronicles <laughs> oddity that mm. is confused the heck out of me the first time I read it. Yeah. Um, so the, the Cardinal is the overarching leader of the Brotherhood. Okay. okay. That being said, there are also Cardinals of each of the great cathedrals on each of the main planets. 
So, for instance, you have Cardinal Dominic, who's the, the sheriff of Luna, you know, okay. the, the cardinal yeah. of the cathedral in Luna. He's a cardinal. And even though there's no difference in title, right, he's not the cardinal. The cardinal. So there's okay. the cardinal. Who it sounds is, like they didn't want to use the word the pope. <laughs> right. right, exactly. What do we put above cardinals? Well, we had two popes, so <laughs> cardinal. 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 <laughs> um, so, yeah, so th- there is the cardinal, who is the overarching leader. Okay. And then you have all of these sub-cardinals. Um, and so, yeah, the the cardinal is a... Um, so one of the things that we've been trying to do <laughs> with uh, Wars and Eternal is figure out which kind of deviation in canon yeah. right, we, we're going to grab a hold of and say this is the version we're using. Sure. And in general, we said it's first edition Warzone and second edition Mutant Chronicles role-playing game. Okay. Okay. Well, even narrowing it down to that, you know, we've got things like the, for the Brotherhood Sacred Warriors, right? What are they actually armed with? Are, do they have sword and shield? Do they have sword and carbine? What does the carbine actually look like? Do they have helmets? <laughs> do they not have helmets? Because there's multiple depictions. Sure. And a lot of that just came from the fact that they're producing books. They've got, here's a piece of art. How much can we use this art? Right. Yeah. And so it got used in a bunch of different places and, um, and then people built off of that. Um, so, so one of the things we've been trying to do is establish like, this is, this is what we're going to um, use as our baseline. Sure. So the Cardinal, the overarching Cardinal is, is an awesome one. Now it's not going to probably impact Wars and Eternals development mechanically, miniatures, anything okay. like that. But there are, there are two presentations of the Cardinal. So the, the, the latter one, the one that came out in Mutant Chronicles um, second edition is that you know, Nathaniel Durand was the original cardinal, was the, the one who brought the, the use of the art um, to humanity, became the, uh, uh, the initial like resistance to the, uh, to the Dark Legion, um, you know, organized the corporations. Yeah. Um, and, and was really the, the person who identified this is, this is an overarching threat to all of mankind. We need to organize. Led the Venusian Crusade to, you know, to, to slay Elgaroth and ultimately, um, you know, establish the Brotherhood as like this beacon to, to defend humanity. The beacon of light. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, he was mortally wounded. He dies. Another um, cardinal is named. This cardinal takes over. Um, takes a lot of uh, Duran's teachings, um, etches them into kind of the foundations of these tablets that mm-hmm. that are like the cornerstones of all the cathedrals. So they tell the story. Um, and then there's been a succession a succession of cardinals since then. Yeah. Right? So that's that's the the more typical story or the one that, <laughs> that like makes the most sense, right? Is sure. that it's yep. you know, here's a guy and then it's a bunch of people after. The first edition Mutant Chronicles role playing game source book for Brotherhood though notes that there are only three people who have ever been the Cardinal. Okay. So when Nathaniel Duran was the Cardinal, he had two brothers. Alex. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, have you read this? No. You're oh. you are one of those iterations, right? <laughs> <laughs> you will be. <laughs> <laughs> so um and the idea being that uh he recognized that you know humanity was going to constantly be engaged in infighting, that you know, there needed to be like this strong single figure kind of watching over mankind. And so while they had taught the art to all of their, you know, the mystics mm-hmm. and the keepers of the art and the brotherhood, they had discovered this one additional super powerful form um, that allowed them to basically extend the lifespan of a person. Really? And so what they did was Nathaniel Duran kind of reached his like, oh, I should be dead by now. I'm too old. So I'm going to fake my death. And then one of my two brothers is going to be like a lowly acolyte and is going to spend his, you know, 30 years working his way back up. (laughs) And then he will eventually be named the next cardinal. And then they're going to rotate through. And so that in the thousands of years, there's only been three cardinals. They've all had different (laughs) names. They've all presented them. So trying to figure out so which what, one of these. So what was, what was what's the original's name again? Nathaniel Durand. Nathaniel Durand, is, Alex Durand. I, I think and the Marcus. Other, I can't remember what the. Because it sounds very much like how you, uh, on Underworld they would sleep a vampire yep. while the other one 
two vampires are asleep mm-hmm. by one, 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 is one a, rule. One rule. It's yeah. exactly right. Yes. And, and then they yep. just kind of rotate through. Yep, 100%. So it's scary. The same type of thing. And I can't Ooh. remember the name of the two brothers in there. <laughs> but, but yeah, so the idea we'll is look those three kind of just huh. rotate through. I like that. Now, I like that too. Arguably, the two stories could work together, right? Because mm, all yeah. of the named, because in the second edition rule book, they get a list. These are all the cardinals. Yeah. Those could just be false names for the same for Durant, three brothers. Yeah. So right. some of the some of the lore doesn't fit nicely into that, mm-hmm. but it yeah. could still generally work that way. And so I think that's probably the approach we're going to take because you know the idea of you know the Brotherhood is this you know benevolent organization that does show up and accuse you of being a heretic. Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> um, but, but the fact that they're also <laughs> led by three dudes who think that they're so infallible that they are the only ones who can lead this organization <laughs> for its entire existence just, you know, kind of creates further this idea that, no, 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 no. You, you, guys, you guys literally are not the good guys. But <laughs> yeah, it seems a little shady. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. And, and so, you know, the it's an easy thing to say, like, oh, the Brotherhood is good and light and the Dark Legion is evil and dark and it's a simple binary. Yeah. But no, I mean, the corporations are all gray and muddy and backstabbing, so the Brotherhood, they're just humans as well. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's part of the direction we're going. Yeah, exactly. Heretic. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's great. Like, you get to a point where the Brotherhood has become so ingrained and is so desirous of, you know, maintaining their power Mm-hmm. That yeah, yeah, like some capital executive is like, I'd really like that middle management position. Hey, uh, Brotherhood, uh, I think Bruce over here might be a heretic. <laughs> and, <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear the the boot. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a, a pair of mortificators bust in the door. Bruce is dragged and out. Gone. And now I'm, you know, the regional sales director for, <laughs> for capital. <laughs> right, exactly. And, yeah, I mean. And good is always such a huge just matter of perspective. Yep. Wait, wait, who, who is that? What happened, happened there? Uh-huh. Just like uh-huh. the Inquisition. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the Brotherhood just arrives. That's right. We're here, baby. Hey, Jeff. Howdy. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. That's great. Hey, it's, it was like perfect time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 100%, right? You know, any any narrative where there's a very clear, this is good, this is bad. Oh, 100%. 100%. No, I mean, the Dark Legion, there's nothing good about them. They are the Are you sure? Answer. Well, you know what? You're probably right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're just I trying mean, to expand. But probably. when we're talking about the Brotherhood and the Dark Legion, it kind of, you know. Yeah. It's kind of nice. <laughs> a little bit less complicated than reality. Yeah, because it's a game. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I like I like the version of it's three, three brothers, brothers. Yep. rotating through, exactly. taking on different names to, to just yep. continue that illusion. Yep. Exactly right. Right. Yeah, I, think I think that's, that's a really cool, cool lore piece. Which now makes me think. Oh right. boy, here we go. Is if we got you and Brian and, and you, not me. Um, I'm come not, on, I'm not immersed. You as a cardinal? No, no, no. I'm not immersed <laughs> as much as they are in in this whole space. We need to find a third person. Uh, I think we know the third person. Hall. I think. So. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You three, me? and then we nah. do, we do a sculpt that forms together like the tribunal, <laughs> right? the living tribunal, uh, right? Living tribunal. Where all three of the bus come together. Just form a unimine, right? <laughs> and that's that's the million dollar stretch right there. All right, okay, all right. million dollar stretch. And then yeah, at Adepticon or yeah. at Gen Con. Oh, now you've added it. That. Just, I, well, now because well, if we're gonna go the that's that kind of narrative route, which I think is awesome. Sure. Right. And one of the stretch or one of the actual pledge levels <laughs> on the campaign are if you if it, I think it's like for a thousand dollars, you're gonna get your one of your f- faction boxes or whatever yeah. early, but you're also going to have the opportunity at one of those two events, yep. depending on which one is where it's To play like some closer. games and have dinner and, yeah. Yeah, you get to come and hang out with the Resnova group and play early access. With the Cardinals. With, with the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'll say uh, In full cosplay would, regalia, right? That would be freaking awesome. <laughs> we, we hit a million dollars. And I'll be a Mearman. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, if we hit a million, 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 million dollars, dollars, I will... Uh, That's a safe statement. I will pledge that Rick Hall will be there. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And, then, and that means that all the Cardinals oh, will be there. Boy. I'll dress up like yep. a Mearman <laughs> or a, uh, a Free Marine. All right, yeah. Uh, right? Um, and then you know whoever else is in the in the squad there will be you know another like who, who's a, who's like a major guard character type for the Cardinals. Uh, those are the, the Fury Elite Guard. Those are women though, right? No, no Fury Elite Guard. Well, they could be men or women. They're right. but they're the 
super heavily armored, massive, double-handed swords. Um, oh, but you got to have somebody like out of shape who can't really walk very well. <laughs> you know, you have like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. characters like that. Right. Yeah. No. Actually, like a four hundred pound. <laughs> I could just be an agro. Well, there, 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 there's a dude. I could be. There's that a guy. dude named Jake Kramer who is a uh, former free marine who is like you know washed out of the military and is now just a uh, mercenary. Yeah, for, yeah that sounds like Rick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right. The free marines made me the man I am today. Oh my god. Right. Exactly. All right, boys and ladies, you heard that there, right? Right here, you heard it. All Get right. it to a million. <laughs> The well, three and, and all of a sudden, at least I'm going to be the depth card as a cardinal. What? Exactly. Yeah, you are. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be I mean, glorious. All right. Three cardinals and Jake Kramer. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with that, it's a wrap for the day. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. And don't forget to follow us on all the social medias. And have a good night. Peace.